Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 615. What are mitochondria, and what is their importance to our health? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about something biological you probably slept through in biology class, but they're very important as we age. They're called mitochondria. And they become kind of a, a word that advertisers throw around. I'm not sure that they even know what they are. And, oh, you should feed your mitochondria. You, could, you should make your mitochondria healthier. I mean, most people know that mitochondria should be healthy within, and they live in your cells somehow, but they're not sure what they do. And so since it's being thrown around a lot, I thought it might be a good thing to explain what mitochondria are, what they do in your body, uh, what some of the different things medicine does to not make them better or make them worse, believe it or not, and what you can do to make them healthier. So, so... If you think of mitochondria, it's, it's like a, something that you would look in a microscope, and even it had to be a high-powered microscope, and then you would look at a cell and then look within the cell, which I'm not sure unless you use a specific kind of specialized microscope that a pathologist has, you could even see anything like this. But I'll show you a picture of them. The mitochondria are little tiny um, jelly bean-shaped um, power plants. They basically take blood sugar and oxygen and water, actually blood sugar and oxygen, and they make them into carbon dioxide, energy, and water. So that's the little teeny tiny thing inside a cell. It's called an organelle. It's not an organ. It's, it's a subset of a cell, and they call it an organelle. It's very complicated. And interestingly enough, all of a person's mitochondria come from their mother. Their fathers have nothing to do with mitochondria. <laughs> so following mitochondria, you may have, have done this um, in Ancestry.com or in, uh, like I have, 23andMe, that try to follow your inheritance. Where did you come from? Um, you can find your mother's line through the genetics of your mitochondria. And you can follow it all the way back to eat, basically. So that's mitochondria. Yes, they're just like any other genetic, um, genetic um, information system. They actually get problems. They have mutations. And that is one of the things that changes us as we go through the, the eons. We have had mutations to our genetics, even inside our mitochondria. And that's how they follow us to different places on the earth, where our mother's genes came from. It's very, it, that part is really interesting to me because it's not necessarily science, but it is, it is definitely a genealogy. So, so one of the things that made me want to talk about this was just that I think it's misunderstood. I think mitochondria are, they're not easily changed and they're not easily fed. And basically it is a, an, you have to be healthy on the macrocosm, the, the, your whole body has to be healthy. What you do, what you eat, uh, your stress level, how you get rid of stress, your psychological level, the people you love, everything has to be healthy to then get all the way down to from tissues to cells to organelles, which is inside your cell called mitochondria. So it requires a, a full body redo basically, if you are not following healthy lifestyles, then your cells aren't breathing well. They call the mitochondria the breathing of the cell. And you're not making much energy, and no wonder you're tired. Because you're feeding your body the wrong things, and you're not exercising your body, and 
you may not even be using your brain for positive things, or you, you may have a uh, toxic relationship that is affecting you, that affects everything. And it affects how your cells breathe, believe it or not. So um, to locate our mitochondria, I'm going to show a I'm going to show you a little picture here beside me. Um, my, this is how they're defined. Mitochondria are small, oval, subcellular energy packs located in every cell in our bodies. These organelles um, within our cells turn sugar or blood sugar, blood sugar from our food into ATP, which is energy, and carbon dioxide. They act like miniature lungs, taking in sugar, which is made from oxygen and carbon, and returning carbon dioxide as byproduct. Scientists say that mitochondria activity is respiration. The carbon dioxide passes out of the cell and is excreted by the lungs. Pretty cool. So mitochondria as a catchword, um, let me just sift through that. Mitochondria are healthier when you eat certain things. When you eat L-carnitine, which is in red meat, that helps, that actually helps your uh, mitochondria. When you eat omega-3s, which are in, the highest omega-3 concentration is in salmon, but it's in generally in fish, that feeds your mitochondria. When uh, you have re resver if I could say this, resveratrol, that's an anti-aging substance that comes in dark chocolate. So when you have that, it feeds, it feeds your mitochondria. And alpha lipoic acid, which is one of the things is in deep, deep green leafy vegetables like kale. All of those things are, are foods that actually feed your mitochondria, but you don't see any junk food in there. You don't see any trans fats. You don't see any, you don't see anything that is unhealthy. You see, you should be eating elemental food, real food, real meat, real cheese, real, I mean, basically not processed. Um, Many times when we're talking about how to optimize your health, because our food doesn't, even if we choose a food that properly, we may not get enough of it and we may not have the nutrition in that food that maybe was there 50 or 60 years ago. So many people choose to take the supplements, uh, resveratrol, alpha lipoic acid, L-carnitine, and omega-3 uh, to heal sick mitochondria. So those, those allegations by um, the advertising community, those are true. But basically, it isn't necessarily, oh, you have to take this supplement that has these different things in it. There's lots of other things they put in it um, to get healthy or to make your mitochondria healthy. Let me rephrase. Um, one of the things that I think is an um, oxymoron in terms of medicine is that we want to provide preventive medicine. So one of the one of the, so doctors traditionally to prevent heart disease have been putting everybody on statins. Okay? So great, but we aren't sure if if cholesterol actually actually does cause atherosclerosis and heart disease. We just know that in some people it does and those are the people we know who have had a heart attack or have a lot of plaque on the inside of their blood vessels, we know that they are the people that get that, but not everybody. So statins went from being treated, treatment for people who had severe compromise of their arteries already or who have had a heart attack or a stroke to statins going to everybody, oh, to prevent disease. Well, statins work by impairing your mitochondria from working. I mean, to me, this is like taking a drug to save you from one thing to make you sick in many other areas. So that's where I find mitochondria to be very interesting little organ organelles because we, they can make us healthy or they can make us sick, and compromising them somehow decreases our cholesterol. But we need cholesterol for our brain. We need cholesterol for, to repair our brain, to grow our brain. We need it for all of our cell walls in our body. So it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a problem in medicine that we are actually using something to compromise very important parts of our cells uh, because we want to stop heart disease. 
I don't really understand when this will stop, although the I had read an article this week in July of 2022 that the European um, Union had decided that statins would not be given to everyone. They would only be given to people who had proven thick plaque in their blood vessels and to um, men who had had a heart attack and not to women because it did not work in the same way for women as men. And I've seen that. Lots of women on statins come in aching all over and they, they're miserable and they can't think anymore. And, and it, it really is a detriment to them. And um, women just don't respond the same way. Now, having said that, in the United States, the FDA didn't check how statins worked for women. They didn't test us because they didn't test any of us until 2014. So, so for women, no drug was tested on us if it was, uh, if it was made, uh, if it was approved by the FDA before 2014 and statins were, then, then we haven't been tested. But the European Union has said, Mm, we don't think it works very well on women, and we may and it may be detrimental. So they don't approve it for use on women, and they only approve it for people who have already have heart disease or who already have plaque that's been proven. So you may see a difference in how people are prescribing. Maybe not. Some people continue to prescribe as they prescribed in medical school for the whole their whole career. So I'm not sure um, how good that is. I do I do have an alternative for. Um, for statins, and that is, uh, I use Zetia, which is not a statin. It does not affect the uh, mitochondria, and it does help get rid of some cholesterol through your intestines, and it cleans up your arteries. So if you already have plaque, it actually starts cleaning that plaque up, and so that's an excellent uh, alternative to a statin for someone who has not had a heart attack uh, as of yet. And um, if you have atherosclerotic plaque, then Arteriosol, which is a supplement, is a very good supplement to, to assist with Zetia to, to actually get rid of it or decrease its thickness. So statins, by the way, and most people think they're, they're decreasing the cholesterol um, or the plaque on their vessels. It doesn't do anything to decrease it. It just stops you from accumulating more. Zetia actually helps... A whittle away the plaque, which is, is a good thing, because then it opens the blood vessels, and then you get more oxygen and more blood. So um, hopefully now you get what mitochondria are, since everybody's talking about them. You, you understand that they're very important, that we shouldn't impair them, and that there are some supplements and some foods that really do help feed our mit mitochondria. But being healthy overall is one of the best ways to feed your mitochondria and getting a variety of foods. So next week, we're going to talk about um, how my mitochondria can get sick and cause us to be sick in many different ways. So please tune in next week, and we'll be talking about that. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.